Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about Hungarian true crime cases and my name is Tima and unfortunately today's case is going to be to date my most brutal and fucked up case that I cover on this channel so there is gonna be no joking around, no funny comments from my end. This crime was committed against a newborn baby, so if you are not okay with listening to that, then I recommend you don't watch this video at all, and let's get started. Today's case takes place back in 2018 in the village or town of Pasto. In Hungary, if someone is involved in or affected by a crime, we keep them semi-anonymous by only using their given names and the initials of their family names. So in all of the court transcripts, she is referred to as H. Monica, but because the internet is always one step ahead, we know her full name. And because this was a fucking bitch, I do not feel bad outing her and calling her by her full name. So this was a woman called Hedy Monica and she had recently moved to Pasto into a family home with her three children and her new partner. Her oldest son was from a previous relationship in which her ex-partner used to be a raging alcoholic and toxic and abusive. So she left that relationship behind and soon got together with her now new partner, a man called Janos. And they together had two children and they were all under the ages of five when this case took place. They lived in this house, they had an okay, ordinary car, they had a dog, they had an absolutely simple, ordinary and normal life. There was nothing special about them, at least what it looked like from the outside. Janos used to work as a construction worker, so he commuted to Budapest every day to work on this construction site. And now Monica, having two young children, was a stay-at-home mom. In Hungary, you get two years of paid maternity leave for each child. And because all of her kids were very young, she was at home now for a long time, for several years without working. Before she went on a maternity leave though, she used to work in a very low quality local pub in Pasto. She constantly posted on her Facebook page pictures and statuses and songs. Initially, Janos and Monica and the three children used to live in the family home with the family of Janos. But they soon kicked them out because Monica had anger management issues, she had bad behavior and she was constantly cheating on Janos. And everybody knew about this. Janos knew that he was being cheated on and he didn't leave this relationship. I mean, they constantly had fights and then broke up and got back together the next day. So it was not a healthy relationship whatsoever. Janos and Monica made an agreement that they would not have any children anymore and Janos took it very seriously. According to Monica, he even threatened her that had she fallen pregnant again, Janos would beat the baby out of her. Now, I don't know if it's a true statement, or Monica lied and fabricated this, or if Janos really threatened her, or was it just an odd, fucked up figure of speech, and he didn't really mean it seriously. I don't know, but either way, the worst thing happened and Monica fell pregnant again in 2017. Because she was allegedly afraid of the anger of Janos in case he finds out that she is pregnant, again, despite the agreement, she kept this pregnancy entirely secret. Nobody knew about this. Neither Janos nor her or his family or any of their friends, her OBGYN, nobody knew that she was pregnant. And because of her body type and the way she dressed, it wasn't apparent to anyone. She was kind of chubby, so there was room for her to grow. It didn't really look like she had a big 
bigger belly than usual and she always wore very baggy clothes and puffer jackets so really nobody saw that she was pregnant despite i have heard of such things happening before that if somebody's trying to keep a pregnancy secret then somehow subconsciously their body keeps their belly flatter than it would normally be like your psyche can affect how your body responds and i think that's a very interesting thing maybe you have heard of such things too on the 30th of december in 2017 janos and modica had another falling out they had one of those fights again when they broke up but they were going to make peace and get back together again like they had done a dozen times but at that time, Janos was so angry that he kicked her out of their rental home. Because remember, they had been kicked out of Janos's family home, so now they rented a place, if I, I know correctly. Now, it was December, it was in the middle of winter, and New Year's was also coming up. Monica luckily had some friends to spend a couple of days with and spent the New Year's party with. So she went over to some of her friends in Pasto and stayed there for two days, celebrated the New Year's and everything went normal. Again, nobody noticed anything out of the ordinary with her. On the 1st of January 2018, so on the morning of New Year's Day, Monica decided to leave her friend's home walk back home to her family home with Janos and make peace, get back together, start over and act like nothing just happened. She left at around 8.30 to 9 a.m. and because it was the morning after the New Year's party, the streets were completely empty. And suddenly, in the middle of her walk, she felt her water breaking. And she already could feel the baby coming. I don't know much about pregnancy and labor, honestly, I do not know how fast it would go down. As much as I know from most people's experience that giving birth can take hours, if not even days, so I don't know how, I don't know why it was coming so fast in her case. Was she in labor? for a few hours and she didn't notice, she didn't know, or she just decided to ignore on purpose? Or was it just one of those very fast-paced birthing when it takes literally an hour and the baby is out? I don't know. Either way, in the middle of her walk, she started giving birth. So she quickly collected all of her strength and ran to the creek nearby and hid under a bridge where she undressed and, in a squatting position, gave birth to her baby without any medical intervention, without any help, without any proper tools and devices and medication. She gave birth to a perfectly healthy baby boy at the 37th week of her pregnancy. Keeping in mind that it was now January, it was cold outside and this newborn baby was just there, naked and wet and slimy. First of all, I'm gonna tell you what we know for a fact happened, and then I'm going to tell you what she attested to, her version of events. So there is evidence to support the theory that after giving birth, Monica was in a postpartum psychosis and she was allegedly so afraid of Janos figuring out that she gave birth to yet another baby, she decided to kill the baby. Skip ahead now if you don't want to hear the details. Based on the remains that were later found, there was evidence to support that Monica beat the baby in the head at least four times with her fist to the point that the baby's skull crushed and the bone fragments were stuck on top of each other. Then she strangled the baby to make sure that he was dead. And when she was sure that the baby was dead, she took out a pocket knife that she had with her and cut off the baby's hands and the baby's head. She decapitated her own 
newborn baby. Then she put the remains of the baby and the knife in a plastic bag. She walked about 2.5 kilometers all the way to a Romani ghetto area of the town. It was a very poverty-stricken area. There she probably discarded of the baby's remains in the creek, except for the head, because she threw the baby's head into the trash. Then she walked back home and posted on Facebook some songs and some stupid things that were on her mind as if nothing happened. Her version of events is a complete bullshit, it's a lie and she doesn't admit to the truth that has physical evidence to it and she keeps saying that after giving birth she tried to lift up the baby and hold him in her hands but because she was all weak and the baby was all slimy she dropped the baby into the creek and the baby fell head first onto a rock and that's when she thought that the baby must have died immediately she just left the baby there but that doesn't explain how the baby's head was cut off and got into the trash can none of the other body parts were found we have only found the head and her version of events doesn't explain shit there is a pretty big inconsistency in some of the sources that i have read 2018 january 1st fell on a monday and the police received a phone call on a tuesday but some sources say that it was the 2nd of january some sources say that it was the 8th of january either way the police received a phone call at 8 30 pm on a tuesday from a man who had called to let the police know that he had found the decapitated head of a baby and the way he found it is the following the dog brought the head first onto the corridor then to the living room and placed it in the corner i went closer to see what it was and at first i didn't even realize what i was holding in my hand i got sick and i almost vomited when i finally realized what it was i think i will never be able to get that image out of my head for the rest of my life and my wife won't either she is also pregnant this man who lived in this romani ghetto area of town found a head because his dog probably found it in the trash and brought it into their family home. Imagine being a pregnant woman and your dog brings home the head of a baby. According to him, the baby's head looked somewhat fresh, like it was still bloody and there were still visible cut wounds and it was not in the advanced stages of decomposition the location where monica went to discard of the body parts was chosen by her strategically as i said it was a very poverty stricken area which was mainly inhabited by romani people and it is very possible that she chose that spot to kind of shift the blame on the people that live there because they are marginalized by society even if they didn't do anything they are gonna be suspected for doing it so she probably thought that if she discards of the baby's remains there then the police would immediately suspect one of the people that lived there some people even gave interviews to the media and there was a man who literally said and i quote our kind would never do this we would commit a lot of crimes but never this the police started the investigation and they tried to find the rest of the remains they asked around in the whole village who gave birth recently if any babies went missing or if somebody would have the motive to commit such thing they swarmed the whole area with search dogs and hundreds of police officers searched the village the most important and biggest piece of the puzzle is missing from every single one of the sources that i have read and i have read about 20 so i don't know 
how the police connected Monica to the case. I don't know if somebody actually knew that she was pregnant somehow, if she gave herself up, if somebody witnessed her somehow, or if they found like CCTV footage, I don't know. But somehow the police found her. And remember how the head was found at night on Tuesday? By Wednesday, Monica was arrested and in custody. I wish I could tell you how they found her, but I have no idea. Maybe the police kept their cards close to their chest in the investigation? I don't know. A psychologist um, analyzed her situation. And oddly, this criminal psychologist was somehow trying to justify her actions, saying that because she probably grew up in an abusive childhood herself, that her father and her brothers and her ex-partners were all abusive physically and mentally, she was unable to process this, the consequences and the severity of her actions, and that she was just terrified of Janos's anger had she fallen pregnant again. I don't care why she did it. I don't care what was going on in her mind. Millions of people have toxic and abusive childhoods and relationships and they don't decapitate a newborn baby, their own newborn baby. I understand that that would have had a very bad impact on her and she would have a lot of struggles in her adulthood. Where, where is the bridge between having a bad childhood and being a murderer? Because the psychologist deemed her able to stand trial, her trial started and there were no mitigating factors for her. In Hungary, the trials are not public. You cannot listen to, watch or read the transcripts. So I only know what the sources could report on. First, she was charged with the first degree murder of a minor under the age of 14. In Hungary, the maximum sentence for that is life in prison. The minimum is only 10 years and the average that offenders get for this charge is 20 years. So in Hungary, most people who kill a kid get away with only 20 years in prison. During the whole trial, this bitch was allowed to stay at home in house arrest with her mom. But that's not all. In the December of 2019, she had one of those court hearings and it would take a full day. She went to the court hearing in the morning. She was there, no problem. Then there was a recess and the court hearing was supposed to continue in the afternoon. But she didn't return to the courtroom in the afternoon. Why, you may ask? because she gave birth to another kid in the hospital nearby. Like, she could feel that the baby was coming, and then in the recess, she just walked over to the hospital and she gave birth in the afternoon. And this pregnancy was again a complete secret. Nobody knew that she was pregnant. She had one more pregnancy where she didn't even visit the OBGYN, endangering herself and the baby and subjecting themselves to a bunch of sicknesses and birth defects. And this was in the December of 2019, so assuming that the regular pregnancy is nine months long, then she got pregnant in the March of 2019, more or less. When did she have the chance to have sex and fall pregnant? Who would have sex with a murderer? And how was she able to keep this pregnancy secret from everybody yet again? I do not know. But anyway, after giving birth, the hospital called the police. Hey, uh, there is a person with ankle cuffs. You might want to come and fetch her. So the police obviously went to the hospital, got her back to the courtroom, arrested her again, and took the baby. Luckily, this baby girl was born fully healthy, despite her negligent mother, who literally endangered her and subjected her to a lot of birth defects by not going to the OBGYN and just keeping the pregnancy secret. I don't even understand 
how she was allowed to leave the courtroom unattended in the recess. Like, why can a person who is charged with first-degree murder of a minor walk out of the courtroom in the recess without anyone knowing? I don't know if this is just like the prime example of how Hungarian law favors criminals and fails the victims. Anyway, one year later, on the 2nd of December 2020, so not so long ago, we got her final sentence. And what she got is honestly a joke. She got 13 years in prison for the deliberate, brutal murder of an innocent, defenseless, newborn baby. She got 13 years after being allowed to be in house arrest for the entire duration of the trial. And on top of that, she only has to pay about $10,000 in court fees. That is the punishment in Hungary for decapitating a baby. And this fucking bitch had the audacity to appeal her sentence because she says it's too much for what she has done. Don't forget that she denies having killed the baby. Her version of events up to today is that she dropped the baby and she thought that the baby died, so she just left him there. And she said to the media the following, I wanted that baby. If I could have, I would have brought him up all alone too. I made a mistake, but I am no murderer. I am guilty of not having called for help. I had tried to escape from Yanni. Janos, but I couldn't because we had two kids together. People divorce for less. People break up for much less. She could have and should have left Janos, no matter how many kids they have together. She should have left him the moment he allegedly threatened her to beat her if she falls pregnant again. And she consciously and deliberately chose to stay with him. She chose to go back into that relationship time after time. She is a grown adult and she continuously made the wrong decision of going back to a relationship that she knew and she thought and she felt was wrong. And then she has the audacity to shift the blame on Janos that she killed the baby because she was afraid of Janos. This crime had more than one victim. This affected everybody around Monica. First of all, after she was sentenced to 13 years and she is in prison, she had a mental breakdown. And she allegedly doesn't do anything all day. She doesn't talk with anyone, she barely moves, she barely eats. She just sits on her bed and stares ahead, not doing, not saying anything. And I hope that finally her crime sunk in for her. I hope that she finally understands the severity of her crime and that's why she is unable to process reality. Her kids were bullied in school and in kindergarten for what their mother did. Luckily they are doing better now, but they are forever labeled as the children of a baby murderer. So I don't know how they are going to come back from that. Her youngest kid, who was about one year old, completely forgot about their mom, like this kid doesn't even remember that she exists and never asks about her. The custody fell onto Janos and he tried to be the best single father that he could. He tried his best to bring up these three small children while he was working as a construction worker in a different city. 
And people said that he did really well in the beginning, but eventually depression and his demons got him and he turned to alcohol and he became an unfit father. So all three children were taken by the CPS and I hope that they are in a good place. I hope that they are taken care of. Remember I said that they used to live in a rental home with Monica? After this whole ordeal, the landlord broke contract with Janos and he lost his rental home because the landlord didn't want to be associated with this family. So Janos had to move back to his family's home. Initially things were fine but remember that the family of Janos always disliked Monica and after this they could only hate her. And when Janos decided to visit Monica in prison and try to understand why she did what she did, and whose the baby was. He just wanted some answers, some closure for himself. Janos's family got so angry with him that he tried to make contact with her that they kicked their own son out. And I don't know where Janos lives now, but his life was fully ruined as well. We don't know whose that baby was. We don't know if it was Janos's. Did the mother kill the baby? and now the father has to face this kind of reality? Or was it someone else's? Was it the product of one of Monica's one night stands when she was cheating around? We don't know, but somebody's baby, this innocent, newborn, defenseless baby boy, became the victim of his own mother. That is all that I could find for this case. I read all of the sources that I could find and I hope that I found every piece of information that I could. If you somehow happen to know a piece of the puzzle that I don't, like how she was found and whose the baby was, if, if I find any new updates I will let you guys know. But as of right now I cannot tell you anything else. You know my opinions. You know that I don't think that 13 years and $10,000 was anywhere near enough. The least that she could have gone was a life sentence and that's my kindest offer to her. Let me know what you think of this case. Let me know if you somehow made the connection where I didn't, if you have any further information, any questions, if you want to clarify something, let me know what you think of this bitch. Let me know what you would like to see next and also some of your ideas about the watercolor illustration and true crime video. But now I'm gonna go and head out. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like if you have watched it all the way and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and I see you next time. Bye!